Hillsborough's community radio station. Your life, your music. KLEK 102.5 FM. Good Thursday morning, Jones World. This is meteorologist Tim Root with your KLEK 102.5 forecast. Mostly cloudy skies developing today near 60. It will be windy, a south wind up to 25, and the chance of showers. Showers and maybe a thunderstorm tonight, mid-50s, rather windy. Windy conditions expected Friday and Friday night with clouds, showers, and thunderstorms, maybe a severe thunderstorm, and the temperature Friday very close to 68. Showers and thunderstorms Friday night and rain showers Saturday but clearing skies Sunday. Your life, your music, we're KLEK 102.5 FM. From Peter Story News in London, I'm Oli Barrett. The U.S. says it would take part in serious negotiations with Iran to try and safeguard international peace. Iranian investigators say a plane that crashed on Wednesday was trying to return to the airport in Tehran. Britain's royal family is said to be hurt. The Duke and Duchess of Sussex have announced they'll stand down as senior royals. And another nationwide strike over pensions is underway in France, with transport particularly affected. It's 9.01. KLEK LP Jonesboro, the voice of Arkansas Minority Advocacy Council. It's now time for Community Conversations, a program focusing on the people working to make the Jonesboro community a better place while offering viewpoints from all sides of the issues. The views expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of KLEK 102.5 FM, the voice of Arkansas Minority Advocacy Council, or our underwriters or sponsors. Good morning, everyone, and happy Thursday. It is Thursday. <laughs> Thursday to you. You're tuned in to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. And my very special guests today are members of the Phi Beta Sigma Fraternity Incorporated. Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And, and happy Founders Day to you all. Thank you very much. All right. So I am so happy to finally have some Sigmas in the studio again. It's been a couple of years. So we're going to, without further ado, uh, first do some introductions. I have Dr. J.W. Mason, Dr. Brian Terry, and Mr. Rollo Brown. And so we're just, if you could please give us an introduction of yourself and let the listeners and viewers know who you are and how you have served this community. Go right ahead, Dr. J. Well, Mason. thank you very much. My name is J.W. Mason. Uh, I've been a member of the Jonesboro community for a number of years. Uh, I was employed at Arkansas State University in 1980 and retired in 1993. Okay. So I spent about 33 years there. And uh, I would say my most significant accomplishment was I established a chapter of Phi Beta Sigma fraternity on the campus of Arkansas State University oh, in 1980, and I'm very proud of that. Well, that's yeah. wonderful, and now it's still going strong. Yes, yes. That's amazing. So I hope the young gentlemen uh, continue on the legacy that you created. Well, thank you very much. All right, Dr. Terry. <laughs> Well, Rollo should probably go before me because <laughs> I actually just celebrated uh, four days, five days ago, my year-long anniversary of being in Jonesboro. Okay. Uh, so, uh, but I'm the um, vice uh, vice chancellor for enrollment management over at Arkansas State University, and but I've been here in Jonesboro about a year and hooking up with these guys. I mean, that's the greatest thing about being a part of Phi Beta Sigma is like, I won't, you know, I don't think I, excuse me, I don't think I was in town 10 days before JW reached out to me and said, hey, um, you know, you, you're one of the bros, come on out here and JW and I have lunch once a month to, uh -huh. so he can kind of work me around. Rollo and I's story is even funnier. He and I were sitting next to each other at the barbershop. <laughs> didn't even know. We had no idea. No idea. <laughs> uh, but we started talking and um, just, I don't even, I don't even remember how it came up. We were just, all of a sudden he said, he said, wait a minute. I, we, we, we made a Sigma okay. <laughs> re okay. reference and then all of a sudden we were, we were together then at that point. Oh, goodness. You know, That's it, awesome. You know. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, I'm Rollo Brown. Um, I've been here in Jonesboro 20 years. Came here 1999 to Arkansas State. Okay. Uh, went through our Lambda Eta chapter, the chapter that Dr. Mason started uh, in 2001. And um, went through in 2001, uh, finished my undergraduate in exercise science. And I'm currently uh, working for CentOS as a sales rep for Northeast Arkansas, Southeast Missouri. Um, Phi Beta Sigma has been one of those things that 
directed my life into the right direction. So I'm excited to be here and, and, and celebrate our family's day. That's awesome. And I'm happy to have you gentlemen here. I want to say good morning to Mr. Colby Parker. One of the stigmas that I know, uh, he does great work in the community as well. Wish you could be here, Mr. Colby. <laughs> Maybe next time. All right, so we're going to go ahead and get started and talk about the history of Phi Beta Sigma and when and where it started. And give us some background to what the atmosphere of the country was like during that time. <laughs> Well, we were founded uh, January 9th, 1914 on the campus of Arkansas State University. Uh, we had three young men there who uh, literally wanted to establish a platform for a fraternity to go above and beyond just the social activities that went on on campus. There was nothing wrong with the social activities. Okay. Actually, that was Howard. Oh, Arkansas. I'm sorry. <laughs> you, said, you said Arkansas. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> We're, we're good, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> but on, I appreciate that. Yeah, on, on the campus of Howard <laughs> University, but three young men, A. Langston Taylor, Charles I. Brown, and Leonard F. Morris, literally petitioned the university to allow them to establish uh, a fraternity. And believe it or not, those activities started in 1910. So it literally took a number of years of continuously petitioning the university to uh, recognize uh, the fourth uh, fraternity on that particular particular campus and they were finally recognized and they had recruited nine other young men that was just waiting so as soon as they were recognized um, I think brother Taylor developed a ceremony and then nine other young men were brought into the fraternity as the Genesis line um, culture for service service for humanity uh, are very strong words in Phi Beta Sigma fraternity. Okay, all right. Go ahead, Dr. Taylor. So, uh, there's not much I can add to that, okay. <laughs> but that's kind of how we got started. Um, and I, I think uh, one of the things that has attracted me to it is just what he said, culture for service, service for humanity. It, this is a service fraternity. I mean, this is what we do. We want to be out in the community. It's uh, my particular interest in it is about our education we've got we've got three arms one is education one's better business um, and social action. And social, social, yeah the social action social action but the education piece was what was really tra attracted me to it and the things that we try to do to make sure that our our young men and young women and both get to not just high school but get to college and in fact go further than that i mean it, our goal is for every one of us to be a phd and edd or whatever the case is and that's what we're trying to do but we, you we start young and then we move them on okay you know, and those are uh, you know three principles of brotherhood scholarship and service uh brotherhood was one that kind of really brought me uh towards the five beta sigma because I came here from a small town called Dumas, Arkansas. Okay. And uh, when I got to campus, uh, I was in the band and played on the drum line and, and uh, didn't know anybody. You know, on a large campus, uh, more people on the campus than it was in my hometown. <laughs> and, uh, but it was it was the brothers, the uh, Five Eighty Sigma, that uh, came and, uh, and, and, and uh, introduced themselves and really, really. Uh, kind of infected themselves in my life, and I realized that I had some brothers here that I could I could lean on and get through this time. And so uh, that brotherhood aspect really kind of brought my family, okay, you know, to the aspect of it. So. Uh, I'll give you an example of uh, our former international president uh, Jimmy Hammock, who lives in Little Rock now. Okay. Um, uh, called me and told me, he said, I've just talked to a brother Miller in North Carolina. And he said, Brother Miller just told me that the young man that you all hired, this is Arkansas State University, mm -hmm. Brian Terry, is a signal. Okay. So when he, when he gets to campus, you literally need to reach out to him. And that's what I love about it is, see, that, that brotherhood connection went across three states. It went from <laughs> North Carolina to someplace else, to Little Rock. And then I got a call, so as soon as uh, Brian got here, so I love that brotherhood connection. Uh, I've been a member of the fraternity for 50 years, and uh, at homecoming at U of APB, you would be surprised that some of us old geezers that, are, that have been in fraternity 50 years still find it very exciting to 
reunite and to, you know just just reconnect and so it's it, 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 it it's, it's it's been a great ride if it ended tomorrow it's been a great ride and that's what it should be about you anyone that becomes a part of an organization should join it for the sheer purpose of what they can put into it and what they can get out of it um not you know <laughs> I'm just leave it at that. <laughs> but they definitely should enjoy the process and enjoy being a part of the brotherhood, sister, or whatever it is, you know, and serving the community. Um, that's one interesting thing I found on. I'm looking at your official page, um, Phi Beta Sigma 1914.org. And it says the founders deeply wish to create an organization that viewed itself as a part of the general community rather than a part from the general community. And then it goes on to say that they desire for their fraternity to exist as part of an even greater brotherhood which would be devoted to the inclusive we rather than the exclusive we. Yeah. <laughs> so that sounds like a very important piece. So can you all elaborate on that a little more? So we want to bring the brothers in. Okay. You know, and be and be a bit more inclusive and and so when I was coming through in Lambda Ada, we had guys from different areas. We had football guys, we had guys that were in the band, we had guys that were, you know, tech guys. We we were inclusive. We, we brought the diversity of our okay. minds together to, to expand the purpose of the Phi Beta Sigma. And that's that culture for service and our service for men. And so we can service more people by being a little bit more diverse in the, in the ways that we brought people in. So uh, I love the fact that we're a little bit more inclusive. It, it, it didn't, um, you know, meet some stereotypes that you had to what have. You uh, it was very, very clear <laughs> that we, you know, you you are who you are. Come on, and join us, and bring your talents to what we have, and let's go service the community. I need, I need to be quiet and let Rollo talk. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm almost getting a spiritual high <laughs> listening to him. Yeah. Because he, he literally came through during my era, okay. and that's exactly what we were trying to exemplify, and he got it. Yeah. You know, that's one wonderful. of the things, I, so I'm like in the middle of these guys here. And so when, when I started college, you know, it was right as when school days came out. And I think oh. when school days came out, it scared the bejeebas out of me. Really? <laughs> about, I, mean, I ain't going online because of that, you know. And so I think, um, you know, one of the things that I want to make sure that people know is it's not just an undergrad, but it's a good grad chapter too, mm -hmm. uh, that 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 you can go on. So it's not just about what I say to people all the time is, look, you don't have to do it your freshman year or your sophomore year. Mm -hmm. You can wait it out. And I will tell you, the best one of the best parts about being part of Phi Beta Sigma is I can be wearing my colors, walking through the airport, going to Washington D.C. I've, I've been stopped in Las Vegas. I've been stopped all over. And if you've got those things on, there's going to be a brother that's going to walk up to you and say, wow. "Hey, look," and and do what do what they need to do. And I think that's the cool part about it because you really are never alone where you go. I've been. This is my seventh job. Okay. So, um, you know, I've been in. Um, Illinois. I've been in Washington. I've been in Florida. I've been in North Carolina. I'm now in Ar now I'm in Arkansas. And every place I've been, there's been a Phi Beta Sigma there to make that phone call to say, "Hey, we know you're here." Uh, we had a guy who just relocated to Denver, Denver. Mm -hmm. and he's he's you know, and one one of the first calls he made <laughs> was, "Hey, let me get get." connected with some folks down there. So it's that's just a neat neat thing to be a part of. Right, you got a phone, a phone call, call, it looks call like. <laughs> Good morning, Kelly K. Good morning. Sorry. Please don't hang up. Okay, I apologize. That was a robocall. Robo so we're going to ignore them. All right. I want to say good morning to Mr. Skip Mooney Jr. and Miss Bethany Hill. And Kobe says, thank you for Phi Beta Sigma and the brotherhood that was shown to me. I wouldn't be the man I am today without people like Rollo and Dr. Mason. Thank you, Kobe, for that. <laughs> thank you. I, I'd like to also add, uh, I think, another unique feature a Phi Beta Sigma fraternity is our sister organization, Zeta Phi Beta Sorority, that was established in uh, 1920. In fact, this is their centennial mm -hmm. year. And, and, and of course, our founders and members of Phi Beta Sigma assisted in the establishment. And so from a constitutional perspective, we are the only brother and sister organizations wow. that, are, that are constitutionally linked, uh, linked together. 
And in many communities, uh, our Founders Day programs, uh, joint programs, and a number of other things that we literally do, we always include uh, the Zetas. Matter of fact, I had a brother to uh, pass, a line brother to pass, and uh, I did the Omega ceremony for him, and the Zetas asked could they come in and participate. Mm -hmm. And even though this is a exclusive private ceremony, mm -hmm. it's not private to the Zetas. And so okay. they were there. Uh, helping us uh, put this brother in the Omega chapter, and I was extremely pleased with that. Though. But now we love our Zeta sisters, and believe it or not, the Zeta chapter on the campus of Arkansas State University was significantly assisted by the Sigmas that were already there at the time. That's really wonderful that you all have such a close bond and you really look out for each other. Absolutely. And I'm loving hearing how, you know, the brothers really look out for each other. No matter where you go, you know you have someone that can assist you, um, whether it's lodge. What if you needed some lodging or you just needed, you know, yeah. somewhere to go. Just say you're in an airport and you had a layover. There may be someone that can assist you with, so you wouldn't have to get a hotel or something. So anyway, <laughs> there's all types of assistance available. I love to hear this brotherhood, um, this conversation about the brotherhood. And I want to kind of go back a little bit, just for fun. <laughs> uh, Rollo mentioned about the stereotype. We see it all the time, you know, and this is not to dig any group, and I'm not going to call any names, but, you know, it's like one group is this and one group is that. It's like, you know, what about Sigmas? What, you know, are they known for, like, we don't know <laughs> like but that's the beauty of it is that you can't put a label on right, what a yeah. sigma it like they're not one thing or the other they're just you just who you are <laughs> well you know there are you know people try to come up with different stereotypes you know <laughs> because you got to be placed in a group it's, yeah, because yeah. it's hard for the society to go oh you, you got to be something <laughs> uh, but the truth be told if, if you get behind the doors everybody is just so different in what they in their walk of life. But what's beautiful about it is we all come together as one mm -hmm. in our diversity. And and that that makes Phi Beta Sigma, in my opinion, the the, the best fraternity around. Because we have an array of, of, of areas that we can go after. And guys in different industries and networking and growth and you may be on the same track as it's Brother Brian Terry here, and he can give you guidance in that, mm -hmm. whereas I'm in something else. And we just really have that diversity when it comes to that. So I just love it. Awesome. Although our undergraduates will tell you that we're known for our stepping. We've been, okay. <laughs> <laughs> we've been, we've been champions many, many times. Okay. <laughs> you know, that, that's always been something. That was how Alameda really kind of grew and got our name out there with that. Yeah. So, <laughs> speaking of, when are y'all going to bring back the step show then? That's, uh, that's something on the agenda right now. Yeah. I'm the acting advisor for the Lambeda chapter. And uh, there are a lot of things that we have on the docket okay. that we'd like to see come back down in the future. they got some, some great plans. We just had a uh, a group of uh, guys just come 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 through, and uh, they're Real strong just sharp, yeah. <laughs> and uh, the, 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 the excitement's there, the growth is there. Uh, so we just we, we got some plans, mm -hmm. okay. and uh, and we'd love to see it come back too. There's many brothers that hit me up like, hey man, <laughs> we got to get the the Black History Month STEM show, yes. the Black Homecoming back, yeah. and um, and so. You know, it, it's down the line. Okay. We'd like to see that. But now the lifeblood, though, of any uh, collegiate chapter is advising. Okay. Mm -hmm. It is strong advising. Mm -hmm. When strong advising is present, uh, collegiate chapters have a tendency to flourish. Okay. When the advising is little, they're not there. They they kind of lose their they they lose their way. Mm -hmm. and, um, so. Okay. And so, are you all stepping up and now being those advisors for those young men and I am keeping right them here. on track? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, so we 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 went a ways, and uh, but locally now, you know, I'm putting in the time to 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 help guide these guys in the right direction. And what's awesome is they're so ready for it. Okay. You know, they are. Uh, we're in communication all the time. And, I find myself in a different era than you guys, you know. <laughs> but uh, what I like is the beauty of the change. Okay. You know, it's not the same as it was in 2000, 2001, early 2000s when I was in the chapter. It's, 
social media. It's mm-hmm. it's uh, a yeah. lot of different things that change the way that they do things, and so um, I'm going with the flow as long uh, as well as <laughs> helping the guys some direction. But that direction is just like parents. Yeah, when you got your parents in the house, and they gave you that advice and that and uh, and things. You follow that advice, and it can lead you to a successful road, and that's what we're trying and, to do. And and, and and we're trying to support them because you know there are a lot of opportunities and activities and information above and beyond the local. Mm-hmm. And so there are a lot of activities that go on at the regional level and we need to make sure that we have the resources so they can go and see what happens at the regional level. And then there's a national platform wow. uh, <laughs> that they need to see what goes on at the, you know, at the national level. And they're all different. I mean, in terms of the platform, in terms of what's literally being discussed, What's literally being discussed at the national level now, not only Phi Beta Sigma fraternity, but all the fraternities and sororities, the divine nine. Our national discussion now is what are we literally doing at the collegiate level in terms of hazing and presenting hazing? Mm -hmm. And and that's been a part of a discussion uh, since I was a regional director, and that's back in the 90s, really. I mean, that, that discussion is literally still there wow. because all of us are having challenges in terms of, of, of the process that we utilize in order to have young men and young women uh, join our various organizations. And uh, that's the one thing that we all have in common. Now, we, we have our differences and we have our different program, and that's fine. But when you get to the national level, the national platform conversation, we all are talking the same thing. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. What are we going to do in terms of developing, uh, um, uh, developing a process uh, that we all can sign off on, uh, bringing young men and young women into the and into the fraternity? So that's that's been a challenge. It continues to be a challenge. All right. We're going to put a pin right there. When we come back, we will get into some of the programs that were founded under, or started under the Five Magic Sigma Fraternity Incorporated, and then we'll bring it back to the local level. So you tune in to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM, and we'll be right back after these announcements. I want to say good morning to Ms. Regina Wilson and Adrian Everett over there at Arkansas State University. But don't go away. We'll be right back. You're listening to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. We'll be right back. What are your words doing to your marriage? I'm Mark Merrill with today's Family Minute. We all know how powerful words can be. They have the power to poison and even kill a relationship. But they also have the power to build up and breathe life into a relationship. Here are five types of words that can help breathe life into your marriage. First, respectful words. Choosing to use respectful words with your spouse means choosing to honor them, not undermine them. Second, affirming words. No matter how long you've been together, your spouse still desires to be validated for something they say or do well. For more kinds of words that breathe life into your marriage, check out markmerrill.com. Remember, your family first. Made possible by the Kappa Nu Omega chapter of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated, a nonprofit organization committed to service to all mankind. Kappa Nu Omega Alpha Kappa Alpha on Facebook. Family Minute is brought to you by the guide right Jonesboro Kappa League, a nonprofit organization that guides young men to a life of achievement. Kappa League Jonesboro on Facebook, Jonesboro underscore Kappa League on Instagram, and Jonesboro Kappa League at gmail.com. Today, Today we, decided we decided to walk to school. To school. The, the light counted. 15, 15, 14, 41, 31, I mean 13. We took, we took a, a left, left on Carroll Street. Street. Danny's Danny smart, but he gets sound. distracted. I realized, realized he forgot his homework. I hope, I hope I don't have another, another bad day at school. school. When you can see learning and attention issues from their side, you can be on their side. That's why there's understood.org, a free resource for the parents of the one in five kids with learning and attention issues. Go from misunderstanding to understood.org. Brought to you by Understood and the Ad Council. The Craighead County Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Parade Committee will host the annual Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Youth Explosion Parade and Celebration January 19th and 20th, 2020. 
The Youth Explosion will take place Sunday, January 19th, 4 o'clock p.m. at the Jonesboro High School Auditorium. The MLK Parade will begin Monday, January 20th, with participants lining up at 9 o'clock a.m. and the parade starting at 10.30 a.m. at the Arkansas State University Armory. The MLK program will begin at noon at the Arkansas State University Fowler Center. More information is available via Dr. Ray Scales, 870-897-3076, Deidre Jones, 870-819-7301, or Reverend Curtis Wilson, 870-926-926. 5237. The key to making this station even better could be parked in your driveway right now. Donate your old car to us, you'll get a tax deduction, and we'll tow it away for free. Go to klekfm.org for more information. House of Details, located at 3915 East Highland in Jonesboro, is a proud supporter of KLEK, offering detailing on any type of vehicle, basic wash, hand wash, shampoo, interior cleaning, waxing, buffering, headlight restoration, pickup, delivery, and more, with the motto of, anything mean, we can clean. Details at 870-273-5187, House of Details on Facebook, and at klekfm.org. Are you struggling with your mortgage payments? Call 888-995-HOPE to talk one-on-one -on -one with a housing expert about your options. Or visit makinghomeaffordable.gov. Brought to you by the U.S. Treasury, HUD, and the Ad Council. Major key alert. Don't ever play yourself. The key is to make it. So make it. Learn the real major keys to getting to college at getschool.com. Brought to you by Get Schooled and the Ad Council. And now back to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. Welcome back to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. And as you all can see, we have a new uh, person joining us. Let me get him in the frame. All righty. And his name is Mr. John Pierre Thornton. Good morning, sir. Oh, what in the frame? Mic on. Okay. Mic check, everybody. Here. Okay. We Mike good. Check. <laughs> all righty. So, Mr. John Pierre, so since you're new, and tell us a little bit more about yourself and, you know, what you know, uh, what position you serve, if you have a position within the chapter. I am the Vice President of the Lambda A Chapter of Phi Beta Sigma Fraternity at Arkansas State. Um, Wait up, um, I recently became the Vice President uh, last semester. Okay. And I just helped make sure undergrad runs smoothly. Okay, awesome. And so this is your first year serving? Uh, this is your first year in Phi Beta Sigma? Yes, ma'am. All right, so are you excited about all that is to come? Um, yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you better say yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really excited. <laughs> <laughs> I'm nervous on the radio. I want to go say good morning to Miss Audrey Sanders. She says, the wonderful men of, of Blue Happy Founders Day. Thank you very much. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right, so we're going to uh, go ahead and get into some of the programs um, that were started, I keep saying found it started um, under Phi, the Phi Beta Sigma fraternity. So tell us about the programs, you know, on the national level, and then bring it back home. What do you all do more on a local level? Well, one of our uh, national uh, initiatives, and Rollo and I just happened to be visiting about it before we got on the air, and one that I'm extremely proud of is our Sigma Beta Club okay. initiative. Uh, where in communities we literally establish programs and invite young men to come in and uh, learn uh, not only about Phi Beta Sigma, but we, we, we try to teach life skills. Uh, we have now uh, expanded those initiatives and we bring them to our regional conferences. Uh, uh, we kind of provide the resources to literally get them there. And while we're taking care of the business of Phi Beta Sigma fraternity, we have programs designed just for the young men. Okay. The Sigma, oh, it's just wonderful to see them. They have their yeah. Sigma Beta uh, club <laughs> shirts on, yeah, and yeah. they're 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 fired up, and they they show a lot of a lot of enthusiasm. And that was a national initiative. Now it's a regional initiative, and now Sigma Beta clubs are being established uh, in various uh, communities. That's probably one of the best things that we can do for our young African-American men 
I tell you, it's difficult when you get to be 20, and all of a sudden you you, you start you got to start young. By the mm -hmm. time you get to 19 or 20 years old, as you well know, your your philosophies and approach to things have already been formed. And so we get them at an extremely young age, and like I said, we teach more than just being five age of sigma fraternity. We teach them a life skill. So that that's a national program that I'm extremely pleased. And it's one of our national programs that significantly impact the African American community and the African American male. Okay. Yeah. yeah enough. I could piggyback on that. Having have uh, my son is actually was a, okay. was a Sigma Beta before he went went away. Um, you know, we're hoping he he crosses, but and I and I pressured him. If you're listening, <laughs> Avery. <laughs> no pressure. Uh, but he was Sigma Beta when he was in um, junior high and high school, and. You know, I think it's one of the things that got him into Chapel Hill is that you know he understood service. I was lucky, and I don't I don't know that everybody did this. My father was a he's a vice president at a, a community college, and every time we would go on vacation anywhere, whether it be Rockford, Illinois, or you know Southeast Missouri, wherever we would go, he would always take us to a college. So you know we. Every, everybody's like, oh, I'm excited about Disney World. Well, we'd go to Disney World, but then we'd also be going to Orlando Community College because <laughs> he wanted to make sure that we had ex exposure to what college life was like. So, you know, wow. maybe it didn't make a lot of sense to me when I was 12 and 13. I'm like, you know, day of college is, you know, A, I'm going to be a big football star, so, you know, <laughs> and, and B. But he showed me all of those things that we could do in college, and I think a lot of, a lot of kids miss out on that because, you know, you, you, they – their families don't, you know, it, it's not, the com local community college is not a destination spot, mm -hmm. but he would make sure that we would go on campuses. So I went to the University of Texas and saw how big that campus was when I was first there. And I was like, wow, this is incredible. I mean, how can I do this? And in each of our Sigma Beta um, clubs, that part of that requirement is going on to college campus and seeing how, and, and the bros get together and kind of show them what life is like on being a college student. So it gets them excited in the eighth and ninth grade when they really need to be excited about it. That is really awesome. Yep. Yep. And so uh, we hope to see um, a club spring up here in Jonesboro, mm -hmm. you know, soon. I know that, um, Rollo, you can't share everything that you're working on. However, <laughs> there is some talks about the graduate chapter, you know, coming. Has there ever been a graduate chapter? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We just, uh, you know, people started, you know, taking, taking their jobs and, and, and moving away <laughs> and things like that happens, you know, they take jobs in different areas and, and so it just kind of, you know, fizzles. Yeah. But, um, and at, at the moment we're working on a plan to, to, to gather the guys that are here, okay. uh, to, to get those things, uh, back together. And, uh, and and Sigma Beta is 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 high as a priority uh, for our group because uh, we have some things established in the community already. Um, and we got some great brothers that are out there doing some great things. Okay. Yeah, we have the we got a brother that's doing. Uh, his name's Douglas Moss. He's over at the uh, Math and Science uh, School, and he's doing these uh, the bow tie uh, days, and and it's grown from. Uh, like two or three kids, you know, a, a week uh, to to thirty and forty wow. kids. I mean, his pictures are just growing each time he take a picture with them groups, and uh, those guys kind of look up to him. So we're 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 involved into the community in that type of aspect in the educational realm, and and, and being able to affect these guys' lives right now. And so if we can introduce the Sigma Beta programs to this, we'll be able to kind of grow that. So that's something that we want to see come down the road and so we're just trying to take the proper steps to make sure that we're doing it properly y'all need to go ahead and get that uh together um during kwanzaa yeah. had a conversation with cornelius moore do you know cornelius with cap Alpha yeah, uh -huh. yeah. Uh, yeah i, I told cornelius. him by 2021 we're gonna have an old school field day right. with the lung <laughs> oh, <laughs> so yeah i need to go ahead and get together get that going and get the babies together yeah. maybe old versus new whatever we're gonna put something <laughs> together yeah show this community what we're made of absolutely <laughs> i'm not anything so i'm just gonna be the moderator <laughs> <laughs> okay that's fine <laughs> but anyway i would love to see that program come to pass i was in school in the 90s and so things were again different. You were talking about how different it was, even when from your time in the two thousands to now with technology and social media. Just imagine we didn't have 
we didn't have we had MySpace. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. It was a whole different time. It so. was. College club. <laughs> yeah. So I um, am excited to see the growth coming back and the fellowship and the brotherhood coming back. And I'm happy to see these young gentlemen, you know, keeping the legacy going and picking up that torch and just, you know, continue to carry on. Yeah. And so, um, Mr. Jean-Pierre, what are some programs that the undergraduate chapter hopes to put into place or do, what do you already have in place that we can look forward to in the community? Um, we're trying to make sure our impact on campus is more so felt. People see us around, but there was a time where it was just one person on campus okay. for us, mm-hmm. and we're like rebuilding. We're getting our numbers back together. Okay. So we want to make sure we make an impact on campus and also make an impact in the community. Okay. So we have fundraising events that we do, and we're also trying to like do a lot of a lot more community community service events also. Well, look, we will keep you busy. So <laughs> let us Sleep know <laughs> if you need some hours. Sleep we will Sleep find out. some work for you to do. <laughs> yes. That's what Just we do here. <laughs> That's uh, what yeah. we do here, Kaylee Gay. One of our, also, one of our um, big program. Last semester, uh, we. I think we do it annually. Okay. Uh, we do sleep out with the homeless. Mm-hmm. I remember that. And um, the way it went last semester, we slept out, and we also got um, the clock tower on campus. We mm-hmm. changed the color to blue, so everybody would know that we're outside, like to kind of oh. raise awareness for it. And all the donations that we got, we donated to um, Salvation Army. Yeah. During that time, were you able to, you know, have personal one-on-one conversations with the individuals and kind of hear their story and where they came from? Um, we kind of more so, we took it as an opportunity to like raise awareness around campus. Like okay. if people wanted to come out and learn facts about every night there's somebody homeless in Arkansas, how many, how many people are homeless, how many facts, like, like it's such a, such a broad topic that people overlook. Mm-hmm. We just wanted to shed light on that and raise awareness. Mm-hmm. Well, I hope that that continues on. I hope that we as a community of Jonesboro will continue to support your efforts and help get people off the street that really want to get help. So yep. Thank you so much for doing that. And we look forward to uh, more. Whenever you all have something going on, let us know here at the station. We are your community radio station. Mm-hmm. Let okay. us know what's going on on campus. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. I want to talk about another um, aspect of Phi Beta Sigma, your social action. Um, you won't get very involved in social justice or social awareness issues. So tell us some more about that. Think Doc. <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> I mean, there's there's a lot to go on. I mean, it, it's it's a broad statement. I mean, I'm, I don't know if I can explain it clearly about the social action, but uh, Phi Beta Sigma has always been involved into our social. Uh, aspect politically and uh, and socially so uh, when it comes to you know our political figures our local figures and things of that nature Phi Beta Sigma has always been involved in those uh, situations in, in, in our community and that's why you know social action is one of our you know big initiatives um, but one of our major I'm sorry hold on just one more hello Kelly Kay hello please don't hang up Sorry. Okay, I'm gonna try to ring these robo calls. Okay, I'll apologize, calling. sir. <laughs> One of our major partnerships from a social action perspective has been our work with the March of Dimes. March of Dimes, yes. And we are extremely pleased. We have been partnering with the March of Dimes probably for the last 30 years. And uh, at every conference, uh, we have seven regions within our fraternity. And uh, each region has a regional conference, okay. usually uh, during March and April. And uh, it is amazing how that relationship with the March of Dime has literally expanded. Mm-hmm. Uh, they serve as sponsors for a number of uh, our initiatives uh, during our regional and during our national uh, uh, conferences. Uh, but we have done uh, uh, um, um, yeoman's work uh, from chapter perspective in supporting the March of Dime, March of Dime walks and various other activities. And those monies are obviously contributed to them. And um, we can look out on our website and see uh, the contributions that the various regions have made to, to those initiatives. So that's something that we are extremely proud of, our relationship uh, uh, with the March of Dimes. And um, our region, which is the southwestern region, mm-hmm. had a very strong relationship 
uh, whenever um, uh, we would go to a various region and we would try to find uh, um, uh, uh, an, an entity there that, that would serve children in various capacities okay. and, and we had a teddy bear program. Okay. Now, this is in the southwestern region and I can remember the last one I participated in in Memphis is St. Jude. Okay. Where we literally uh, took more teddy bears than I would care to ever probably <laughs> see again. Okay. But, I, but I mean things like that 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 don't have a significant financial impact. I mean, there's not a lot of money. But to walk into St. Jude and just pass our teddy bear to those kids that are there is like giving them a, a million dollars. I mean, it is. And so we try to do things like that. And one other thing that we do, uh, when we have our various regional uh, conferences, and we can be in Oklahoma City, Kansas City, Tulsa, we literally ask the local chapter, identify something uh, going on in the community where we would like to make a contribution. We'd also like to go out and maybe even even take a picture with whoever's responsible for that. Okay. So we've done it in St. Louis, we've done it in Kansas City, we've done it in Oklahoma City, but we literally do it at every regional conference. Now this is within our region. Okay. Other regions do different things, but okay. the Southwestern region, that's another program that we do. We will be in St. Louis St. on Louis. March the 12th through the 14th, 15th. 15th. Mm -hmm. and, and, and when we get there, uh, there'll be a time allotted that we'll go out and do something in the St. Louis community. We'll make a contribution, financial contribution, but a number of the brothers will literally go out and, and visit with whomever. And so I'm extremely uh, yep. pleased with that and have been able to participate in a, in, in, in a number of them. Uh, some of them will leave you to tears. Okay. And when mm -hmm. you literally go out and see the conditions and you're able to do something about that, I mean, those are very, very rewarding and very satisfying experience for a person that's been around as long as I have. Okay. <laughs> and we have some fun with some of those things, too. I mean, I can tell you, in my, my old chapter, the, uh, me and Brother Miller, we would... This, this time of year would be our annual contest to see who could get the most pledges. And I think last semester, didn't y'all cut y'all's hair or something? Uh. <laughs> so, so, they, so I, I want you to talk about that, but it, you know, it's, so it's not just, you know, we do have fun with when we're raising this money. What'd y'all do? Who, what was the deal on yours? So we had a competition to see who could make, raise the most money for um, St. Jude. Um, so there were three, three participants um, we had what we did was we had three jars and we would let the uh, campus come and whoever had had the most money in their jar had to get their head shaved by the end of it. <laughs> so <laughs> turns out I had the most money, so I had to get my head shaved. Like, <laughs> I used to be bald. I, I went completely bald. How yeah. Okay, how much hair did you have to get cut off? Um, I had like really A lot like, nice curly hair. hair. Oh, <laughs> Um, he had a little mini fro. Yeah. I had a mini fro, but I kind of cut it down to a, like a hot top fade. Okay. So it was all gone. Oh, but, no. but I walked around with a hat for like two, three weeks. But so his waves are coming in nicely. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's back in the 80s. <laughs> <laughs> okay. the wave. But that just shows you, though, that, that, that we do the fraternity's business, but we can have fun, exactly. uh, fun doing so. And uh, i tell you something else I like about it. I saw him at the bank. Uh, not very long ago, uh, uh, he could be my grandson. <laughs> but walking out the bank, he stopped and he looked and he saw me, and I could see some excitement in his eyes. Yeah. And I could see because we had just met each other uh, doing a homecoming. Uh, we met each other uh, in March uh, at regionals too. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. regional conferences. Yeah. You yeah. walked up, at, you walked up on me, uh, and you was asking me to use the computer and check yeah. book your flight, yeah. and you didn't recognize that I was from A State, and I didn't say anything. I knew who you were. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't say anything, and I was like, "Nice to meet you." And you looked down at my shirt, and you was like, "Oh, okay." A State. <laughs> I tell you, who was with me, Dwayne Scott. Was oh yeah, with me. Yeah. Scott, who was a former member of a laminated chapter and a former advisor. advisor. That's a right. He was, he was my advisor. He's for from Mary Jones, for is he? So is he still in Jonesboro? No, he's over in Memphis. Memphis. Okay. Yeah, he's, he's in Memphis. Memphis. Uh, yeah, he did a he, he did a wonderful uh, job. Uh, I tell everybody I kind of breathed the breath into Laminated Chapter, mm -hmm. but 
Dwayne Scott took it to a took it to a, another level. He another, did. another outstanding brother, graduate of Arkansas State University. Back, he's Dr. Dwayne, mm -hmm. Dr. Dwayne Scott. He uh, at one point we were the sixth largest chapter in the nation. Wow. Whenever uh, uh, I was in executive office okay. uh, under Dr. Scott, Scott he uh, he he really helped us grow uh, to exponential wow. numbers and. Uh, 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 he's he's still he's still my guy. We talk quite often. He's my resource uh, whenever I'm trying to help guide these guys and stuff. So he's been my advisor. He's my friend. He's my brother. Uh, we 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 love Dr. Scott. That's awesome. I want to say good morning. I'm sorry. So a few people that checked in. Um, Mr. Shay Robinson says happy Founders Day, and Mr. Adrian Everett A State says happy Founders Day, guys. Beyond joining Phi Beta Sigma, all great guys uh, that I've been connected with over the years. Um, Adrian is an alpha, but mm -hmm. he is friends with everybody. He is, <laughs> he is, he is. He is. <laughs> and we're from the same neck of the woods. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he's, so. he's actually a deacon at my church. He's on okay. the deacon board in my church. Yeah. All right, so um, there's a lot of camaraderie, a lot of yeah. fellowship going on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so um, I do want to mention uh, real quick that you all, under the Sigma programs, um, Sigma Advocacy, there's Project Vote. And with this been an election year, let's talk about how important that is, especially with the younger generation. I want to get your input, Mr. Jean-Pierre. Um, how important is it to be aware of the facts and the candidates and what's all going on local up to the national level? Um, I would say it's very important to be aware. Um, sometimes this is uh, this would be my second time voting. Okay. Um, I voted in 2016 when I turned 18. Okay. Um, and my vote didn't kind of go my way uh, <laughs> until who okay. I voted for. Um, but it was just kind of disheartening to see that uh, my vote didn't kind of go like because this is my first time voting, so of course I want to want the person I vote to to be in office. So I would say it's always good to be aware and know what's going on. Okay. Um, I'm not really into politics. <laughs> Honestly, but I always like to see both sides. So okay. I keep up with um, Fox News and I keep up with CNN. I like to have like a broad spectrum okay. just so I can see what's what's going on over here, what's going on over here, and then I can come to an educated, informed decision about it. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm sorry. We're gonna put another pause right there. We're gonna take another quick break. I want to say good morning to Miss Dominique Phillips who says Happy Founders Day. Thank you all for your service. When we come back, we'll wrap up our discussion and share some final and fun thoughts about Phi Beta Sigma Fraternity Incorporated. You tune into Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM and we'll be right back after these announcements. You're listening to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. We'll be right back. We're back with Money Matters. I'm Alfred Edmund Jr. Today we're covering how to read your credit card statement. Let's talk finance charges and or interest. This is what you're paying for the privilege of borrowing money with your credit card. You do know that credit is not free money, don't you? The finance charge on your monthly credit card statement is the interest you pay on the unpaid balance of your account. The calculation method used to determine the finance charge has an effect on the amount you actually pay in finance charges. The most commonly used calculation method is the average daily balance. Three things you should know about your credit cards at all times. The interest rates you're paying, the balances you owe, and what percentage of your available credit is currently in use. Your goal should be to keep your total credit in use to less than a third of your total credit limits. Understanding this information is critical to your ability to not only manage your credit, but to also shop for the best deals on credit cards, depending on your financial situation and goals. I'm Alfred Edmund Jr. for Money Matters, a product of American Urban Radio Networks. Money Matters is made possible by the Jonesboro Alumni Chapter of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated, a nonprofit organization focused on joy in our sisterhood, power in our voice, and service in our hearts. www.jonesboroalumni.dst.org. Money Matters is brought to you by Bancorp South. 
offering checking, savings, loans, credit cards, and wealth management. www.bancorpsouth.com or 870-972-9800. Money Matters is brought to you by The Guide Right, Jonesboro Capital League, a nonprofit organization that guides young men to a life of achievement. Capital League Jonesboro on Facebook, Jonesboro underscore Capital League on Instagram, and Jonesboro Capital League at gmail.com. KLEK thanks CJ Pepper and the staff of Life Strategy Counseling Incorporated for helping people through hard times in life such as depression, family issues, stress, abuse, and more. They offer counseling and therapy for all ages, individuals, families, and groups. They are located at 1217 Stone Street. Phone number 1-866-972-1268 or online at lscihelp.com. KLEK 102.5 FM salutes small businesses. Small businesses promote local character and success, keeping money in the local economy, local jobs, entrepreneurship, community well-being, and so much more. Contact us today to learn more on how your small business could be featured on KLEK for as little as $25 per month. Shout out to Always and Forever Pet Grooming, offering baths, nails, and haircuts for dogs and cats. 2929 South Caraway Road, Jonesboro, 870-520-0925. Sensory sensitivity, repetitious behavior, lack of eye contact. You can see signs of autism in children as young as 18 months. Learn the signs at autismspeaks.org slash signs. Brought to you by Autism Speaks and the Ad Council. And now back to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. Welcome back to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. I can't tell y'all how much fun I'm having today, especially off air. We can't share that conversation <laughs> with y'all. So, okay, we're going to move right along. Um, so in this final segment, we're just going to wrap up our conversation. I want to say good morning to Ms. Brittany Lewis, who says, Happy Founders Day to my wonderful brothers. Uh, good morning, Dexter Davis from Alpha Phi Alpha. Uh, Dr. Sharice Jones-Bridge, teaching history at Arkansas State, uh, who says, Happy Founders Day. My husband and my brothers are Sigmas. All right. And, and, she, and she's a member of Sigma, Sigma Gamma Rho. Sigma Gamma <laughs> the pretty poodles over there at Arkansas State. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. So we're going to uh, wrap up our discussion. Just go around the table and share some of your fondest memories of being a member of Phi Beta Sigma. And then what do you hope to gain out of it? In your years to come, you know, you're just kind of starting now, so you got a long way to go. <laughs> so we'll let you go first, young. Uh, <laughs> my fondest memory, um, I already kind of explained it, but I touched on it. It was my regionals, which was around this time last year, okay, March. I met him and I spent so much time learning about this man, and just for him to walk up on me and not know who I am, but I know who he is, it was it's kind of sur- uh, a surreal experience, wow. So that's my fondest moment. Okay. That's great. Um, to me, uh, as far as my fondest moments was when I was in the band, uh, I used to be <clears throat> on the drum line just by myself, and uh, guys like Ishmael and, to- and Toby and, and those guys would come and wait for the game to be over okay. to holler at me, and uh, we would discuss, you know, hanging out, and uh, they really wrapped up, wrapped me up as a brother, and uh, I'll never forget those moments. Uh, they, they lasted forever, and uh, as of now, we're 40 years in the chapter, uh, as our chapter is 40 years old now, and, and, and I'm taking different roles in it, so I'm just excited to be a part of these young guys, to be uh, learning from these great people, and, and really still connect with uh, guys like J.W. Mason and, and Brian Terry here. Yeah, I'd say the same thing. It's the camaraderie. I mean, for me, it's just road trips. You know, when you take, we went to a couple of years ago, we road tripped a bunch of us to uh, Detroit for our national conference, and it was one of the greatest times because you you know we can talk like this and we can see each other, but usually when we're talking, it's about something. Mm-hmm. Well, when you're in a car for eight hours, you find out a whole lot about <laughs> people that you didn't know, <laughs> uh, good and bad, I guess. But and you get some real deep discussions on things like that, and I think you know when we talk about you know why you join that brotherhood. Uh, about you know really getting to know somebody and you know you see somebody and you know maybe across the business table 
you may have some differences, but once you actually get to know that person, it becomes a very different kind of kind of situation. I've I've just been really glad for that brotherhood, those kind of things. So road trips for me. All right. Say that. I get a little I get a little nostalgic. Uh, my best friend from uh, college uh, was a gentleman named Claude Nicholson. Okay. And Claude eventually became a prosecuting attorney in Columbus, Ohio. He has since passed. Okay. Uh, he passed about uh, two years ago when I was asked to literally speak at his funeral. And I did. And I, I talked about brotherhood and, and I said, Claude and I probably took brotherhood to a, a, a different level. Most people thought that we were blood brothers oh, because wow. we were always together, inseparable. We were both in Vietnam at the same time, and we wrote each other. And I don't know who would write each other in <laughs> Vietnam, <laughs> but I was an infantryman, and he was a uh, he was a policeman, okay. and we knew that we were there, and we wanted to connect. Sometimes it would take months, <laughs> but um, uh, at his funeral, I talked about brotherhood, and I said, "This is brotherhood." I had my son stand. His name is Claude Nicholson, my friend. Wow. My son's name Nicholas Claude. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I named right. my firstborn son after my after my best friend. Mm -hmm. that's, that's, that's cool. That's cool. That's, that's, cool. that's real cool. That's <laughs> yeah. But his life will live on through my son and through uh, his kids. So awesome. I know that gets to be a little nostalgic, but that's that's very dear to me to have done that and to have taken a, a part in the Omega chapter in his passing. Yeah. That's absolutely amazing. All right, so 2020 and beyond, what can we look forward to? What can the community of Jonesboro look forward to from the members of Phi Beta Sigma Fraternity Incorporated? Uh, we look to add the graduate chapter. We're looking to, you know, grow uh, into the community by helping to bring a program like Sigma Beta to, to light and, uh, and helping these young men continue to infect the community with all the community services that they want to come and bring. Okay. And then, Mr. John here, what can we look forward to seeing on campus? Um, you know, now that you all have your numbers up, and, um, and there's always something to do. But what do you what do you hope to see? I hope to keep our engagement rate up. Um, I want to. I want people to be excited about Sigma as I was when I first found out about joining. So, I hope to like. It's kind of hard to do in this new digital wave of social media. Like, nobody wants to come out. Everybody wants to be on their phone and, like, be on Instagram. Yeah. They're going to be at home. And <laughs> just, just like, we just want to yeah. bring fun events that educate and also they're fun. You know? <laughs> yeah. Educate and empower. Yeah. We just want to We just want to keep the engagement rate up. All right. But well, maybe you have to follow our motto. It says educate, entertain, and empower. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We thank you so much for joining us today. Any shout out? We have two minutes left. Any shout outs you all would like to give? Well, we want to tell Kelly K that uh, anything that we literally can do, uh, uh, let us know. And uh, again, uh, we thank you. All right. Uh, and we really thank Kelly K for the impact that they're literally Absolutely. having on Craighead, Craighead County. Thank you. And all the things that you're involved in. Uh, we, we talked earlier about the, the All Blues uh, Saturday, but we also <laughs> love what you do on Sundays also. Yes, sir. Thank yep. you. Yeah, we want to thank you guys for having us on our Founders Day. Shout out to Brothers of Phi Beta Sigma uh, all across the nation. Absolutely. And uh, shout out especially to our Lambda Brothers here in Jonesboro. Uh, we just we just really want to you know shout out everybody, uh, enjoy the day, uh, be sigmas, okay. and uh, go mob. Y'all right. <laughs> go out there and turn the city blue today. Yeah. <laughs> At least go have lunch, breakfast, coffee, something. <laughs> I know it's still early in the morning, but go fellowship and do something fun today. Absolutely. But you have class next week, so you got to get ready for school. <laughs> what are you studying, by the way? Um, I'm majoring in computer science. Oh, wow. Okay, well, when you get your degree, come on back here and help us with something. <laughs> <laughs> come on, right. And Dr. Terry, are you ready for the new young fresh minds coming on campus? I am, um, <laughs> but we need, if I... The one thing I can say is more. We okay. need. We need. We're gonna. Do, you're gonna hear Phi Beta Sigma more. You're gonna hear Arkansas State 
enrollment more right. <laughs> more is going to be our word for the year is that we're going to, you're going to see us more we're going to be doing more we're going to be having more uh, that's going to be our word this year all right well thank you so very much and there's always community events going on that you all can participate in so be on the lookout for those community events and i would definitely keep you busy don't worry <laughs> all right thank you all thank so you. much for joining us and happy mm -hmm. founders day to you all and to all of my friends out there listening that went to school in the 90s happy founders day to you all too. <laughs> Thank you all for supporting Kaylee K. Thank you for tuning in. I hope you all have a great and blessed day. Thank you. Thank you for listening to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM, a program focusing on the people working to make the Jonesboro community a better place while offering views.